Hi, welcome back to my channel Pi by Me Maths. This is by Juvas Devan. Today we are going to learn this Dijkstra's algorithm. So what this algorithm is used for? You can use this algorithm to find the shortest path between any two vertices. So I'm going to explain the Dijkstra's algorithm using this simple graph. Then we will uh, look at one complex graph, a bigger graph. So usually when I take a graph, I put a dot and label A, B, C, D, E. In this case, I put a circle because we are going to write the order inside the circle. If you are taking PSN at Excel curriculum, you might have noticed that instead of a vertex, instead of these circles, you will be given a box like this. And you need to write the the working values and everything here which I will explain later don't worry about it now let's look at the algorithm first let's learn the algorithm first without the boxes now let's say they want you to find the shortest path between A to E now from A to E they want you to find the shortest path using Dijkstra's algorithm so we are going to start from the vertex A so I'm going to label it number one the vertex number one and the initial value I'm going to take it as zero. Okay, so whenever you start Dijkstra's algorithm, whatever vertex you are starting from, order it as one, the first vertex, and the final label for the vertex is zero, keep it as zero. Now, the next step you need to look at all the vertices that are directly connected to A. If you look at this vertex, C. It's directly connected to A by a single edge. So take this 7 plus 0 right here. 2 plus 0 and that's all. Okay. You just need to take this uh, final label, add this weight of the edge right here. 0 plus 2 is 2 here. There are only two vertices that are directly connected to A. Now the next step. We have these working values, we are going to call it working values to 1, 7. You have to take the one with the least value, which is B here. C has 7, B has 2. So the least value, B has the least value, I'm going to label it as 2. I'm going to label it as 2. So that's our second vertex. Now we need to repeat the process. From B, you have to look for the vertices that are directly connected to B. Okay, from B, B is directly connected, the working value, this is order, okay, this is the final label. This value plus this value right here. Now when it comes to C, listen to me very carefully, C has already, C has a value 7, but from here, 2 plus 4 is 6, you always need to write the smallest number. You see, it was 7 before. But now from B, it's 2 plus 4 is 6. What does that mean? If you want to reach from A to C, instead of going this way, which has like, let's say, two cities, 7 kilometers, you can go to A to B, B to C. You are going to travel through this, uh, you are going to travel 6 kilometers only. That's the shortest path. So basically what you need to do, you have to look for the smallest number. So the working value was 7 before. Because 0 plus 7, 7. But now we are taking from B. So 2 plus 4 is 6. 6 is smaller than 7. So write 6 there. You need to repeat this process now. Now you have two vertices which has some working value 6 and 4. Take the one with the least value D. That's the order of the uh, vertex. Not the order, the, the label. That's the third vertex. Now from D, you have to look for the vertices that are directly connected to D. D to E, the working value 4 plus 5, right, 9 here. Now for C, you have 4 plus 4, 8. 8 is bigger than 6. You need to write the smallest number here, so leave it as it is. Do not write 8, because 4 plus 4 is 8. Let's say instead of 4, you have 1 here. Now 4 plus 1 is 5. You need to write the smallest number because 5 is smaller than 6. Okay? That's how we complete this uh, algorithm. But in this case, it was 4. 4 plus 4 is 8. But you already have a smallest number, smaller than 8. 
So leave it as it is, do not touch it. Now you have two values, so C and E. Which one has the smallest working value? C, label it as number 4. And from C to D, 6 plus 5 is 11, but E has already, E has a working value which is smaller than 11. So leave it as it is. So this is 5. That's how you complete the Dijkstra's algorithm. Okay, we have completed applying the Dijkstra's algorithm now. Let's say they want you to find the shortest path from A to C or A to E, let's say. A to E. You can find the shortest path by observing because it's a simple graph. When you look at it from A to A, if you follow this road, it's going to be 12. But if you follow this road, 2 plus 2 plus 2, 9 only, that's a working value, the final working value of E. That's the shortest path. But if it's a very complex diagram, there is a method you can apply to find the shortest path. We are going to start from E and trace back to A. So we are going to start from E. But you need to apply this condition. You take the working value of E minus the working value of C. You should get the, that should be equal to the weight of the edge connecting these two vertices. So 9 minus 6, it's not 3. Do not take this edge. 9 minus 4, 5. Take this edge. E to D. It's 5. And from D, 4, 6. We are at 3 already. Look at the order. We are at 3 already. Don't go back to the begin number now. 3, you need to look for 2 and 1 only. Don't go to 4 now. So here, 4 minus 2 is 2. So you can take this edge. That's 2. And from here, don't go to C again. Do not even consider it because if you look at the order of the label, it's 4. We are at 2 already. You just need to look at 1 only. 2 minus 0 is 2. So that's the shortest path from A to E. Now let's say they want you to find the shortest path from A to C now. So you need to start from C, trace back to A. So I'm going to start from C, look at the working value 6 minus 0, it's not 7, do not take this road. 6 minus 2, it's 4, so take this road, C to B. Why we are taking this? Because the working value of C minus working value of B is equal to the weight of the edge connecting these two vertices. And from here, 2 minus 0 is 2. This is the shortest path from A to C. That's how you find the shortest path. Now, before I take a complex diagram, I need to explain the boxes. Uh, when I started this video, I told you that if you are following PSN and Excel curriculum, instead of these vertices, you will be given a box like this actually. So, I am going to show you the same algorithm. The method is the same. But I am going to show you what to write here using the same graph. So look at this graph. If you are doing PSN and Excel curriculum, you will be given this graph with boxes instead of circle here. The first one is for vertex. You have three boxes here. The first one is for vertex. You put A, B, C, D and E. And then we put the order of labeling, right? One, two, three, four, five. That should come here in the second box. So I'm going to apply the algorithm one more time. I'll show you how to do it in this graph. Now we are finding the shortest path from A to E. So I'm going to start with A. For A, I'm going to label it. The order of labeling is 1. The final working value, the final label is 0. We started with 0 here. And then look for the vertices that are directly connected to A. So this one, C, 0 plus 7, you write it here. Here we strike out, right? Here we don't strike out. In the next working value, we write next to 7 here. Here 0 plus 2, write the working value 2 here. Now look at B and C. Which one has the smallest working value? B. So the smallest working value, so the order of labeling, that's the second vertex. 
and this working value should come here that means we are not once you put the final label here that means this final working value here we are not going to change this vertices change these values at all and then from b look for the vertices that are directly connected to b by a single edge so here you have b take the final label 2 plus 2 or this one it's the same for b 2 plus 2 2 plus 2 is 4 that's a working value of b but for C, 2 plus 4 is 6. 6 is smaller than 7. Do not strike out. Just write the next working value next to 7. So here I strike out. I showed 6 here. But if you are doing Pearson and Excel curriculum, they want you to write like this actually. You will be given a box. You need to write this way. Now you have C and B. Which one has the smallest working value? 6 or 4? Four? 4 is the smallest one. Label it as three that's a third vertex once you label it the working value should go here and then from d look for the vertices that are directly connected to d e so the final label final working value or this working value which is the same four plus five is nine here and then four plus four is eight here eight should come here if it's smaller than this number six is already small for example let's say you have one here so you put 4 plus 1, write the next working value next to it because 5 is smaller than 6. But in this case we have 4 here. So 4 plus 4 is 8. Do not write it because you already have a smaller number there. Now you are left with two vertices which has a smallest working value C. So label it as number 4 and write the most recent working value here 6. So apparently E is going to be 5. Now, the working value for E, C to E, 6 plus 5, 11, but you already have smallest number here. If you get anything smaller than 9, for example, this edge is 1, 6 plus 1, you write it as 7, because 7 is smaller than 9. But in this case, you have 5, 6 plus 5 is 11, so just leave the 9 as it is. That's the final working value of E. See? It's, it's the same actually. So this here where I apply the, I explain the algorithm normally. Here if you're following PSN and Excel curriculum, this is how you do it. Now to find the shortest path from A to E, you need to start from E, trace path. You always take the final working value minus the final working value. 9 minus 6 is not equal to 5. Don't take this edge. 9 minus 4 is 5. Take the edge. That's how you find the shortest path from A to E. You need to start from E and trace back. From D, the label is the order of the labeling is 3. Don't go to 4. You need to look for the orders which are smaller than 3. So only one here. So 4, this final working value minus the final working value, you get the same result. 4 minus 2 is 2. So take this. And from B, don't go here because the order, look at the order, 2 here. Don't go to anything more than 2. 2 minus 1, sorry, 2 minus 0, you get this. Same as the working value of B minus, the final working value of B minus the final working value of A should be equal to the weight of the edge connecting these two vertices. That's how you find the shortest path. Now I'm going to explain this algorithm by taking another complex graph. 